Hi, I'm Brad, and here is some Metacambria news. Some exciting ones, at least to me. Before I go on and tell you some interesting updates and data mining news for Metacambria, please note if you want to support this channel in future endeavors, go to bradsmells.com slash Patreon. Just a reminder for those who may be new to the channel seeing this video or just a little refresher for people that might have forgot since it's been a while since the last video I talked about this. Metacambria is Meta's next Oculus headset. Well, not Oculus anymore, right? We know a lot about it already. In fact, I've made some videos before with some predictions that at the time seemed crazy, but now they don't seem as crazy anymore to me. But we'll get into that in a little bit. The device is expected to have built-in head haptics, eye and face tracking, and higher resolution panels, all in a smaller form factor with pancake polarization-based lenses. It's still keeping its standalone functionality, but its really biggest difference between it and other headsets other than the features I just mentioned is it's going to have a huge reliance in like capabilities to do AR through VR. It's what you can call a mixed reality headset. They're putting high resolution cameras. They're having also cameras on the controllers as well, so you don't actually lose FOV when it goes behind your head. Um, just a whole lot of upgrades over the Quest 2. Now, the pricing for the device is probably going to actually show the upgrades as well. This is not a consumer, well, I shouldn't say consumer friendly. It's definitely a consumer device, in my opinion, but it's not going to be as cheap as the Quest 2. Before we had the actual code name that was given uh, last Oculus Connect or Facebook Connect or Meta Connect, whatever you want to call it, uh, it was kind of referenced as a Quest Pro. And during that time, I was doing a lot of data mining with some friends like Basti, for example, and uh, a lot of us found some interesting notes about how there was actually two different prototypes for the Cambria project. Now, one of them I mostly talked about as it is the most mature version or the mature prototype is called C-Cliff. Both of these versions, from what I understand, are basically the same actual device, except the one big difference is they're using different types of displays. I just did a huge video, by the way, about all the different types of displays you're going to see in XR devices in the next few years. So if you want to know the like the big details and differences between them, check out that video. I just posted it like a couple days ago. Now, C Cliff is expected to use mini uh, LED panels, which are basically LCD panels, but with a fancy backlight to give you better contrast values and better blacks, mostly. Much cheaper um, than some of the OLED panels that I'm going to be talking about in a minute, but yeah, it's still an upgrade over the overall panel that we have in the Quest 2, which is one long LCD panel. Both Seabright and Seacliff, the Cambria prototypes, do have their own individual panels per eye, which allows to have more IPD values because it's all physical rather than digital. More friendly to a bunch of different head shapes and eye shapes basically at that point. So yeah, mini LED for C Cliff and C Cliff. I've gotten a lot of info about that. They're pretty much like in the final stages of that device. They were seemingly getting ready, really close to announce uh, like at least some of the specs for the device at last connect. It seemed like it anyway, but yeah, it, it never got announced and it's still like kind of a limbo. We haven't heard anything about it. And I kept wondering why was that? Well, then something came out last year, uh, a brand new prototype that we didn't know anything about. And this was called C Bright. Now, C Bright is taking all the cool stuff that C Cliff is going to have, but they have one technology I'm really excited about in it and all the prototypes. It is using micro OLED displays and a very specific kind that seem to have been designed just for Meta themselves. These displays are about 3K per eye compared to the about 2K per eye for the mini LED version. And uh, micro OLED is a emerging technology that even Apple is very interested in using for their headset. It takes all the beautiful quality of OLED and takes that into a smaller form factor with better performance, better response times, which is very important for XR. And it's just something I hope they would pursue. I have a lot of supply chain uh, connections in China and they give me a lot of updates on different products. However, when I talk to these people, they don't know these exact specifics and they don't have the marketing plan for companies like Meta. So they just hear, oh, Meta's working on uh, a new chip with Qualcomm, for example. They've been working hard on it. They don't know if it's going to be available for Cambria, but they are working on it for a Quest 3 or something. And they are also saying, yeah, they're working super hard to get a micro OLED device, uh, fab lines for that as well. I reported that back in January that they made some partnerships with a bunch of different, um, mostly uh, supply materials for the stuff to make the displays to make micro OLED mass producible for any of their headsets. Just recently as well, it was also uh, kind of leaked that uh, both Meta and Apple are working with TSMC to seemingly provide the silicon wafers that would be uh, the OLED would be deposited on for their actual 
micro OLED displays. That's the big difference between micro OLED and, and standard OLED is they're built on silicon wafers. So when we got this new information that there was two different prototypes, C Clip and C Bright, my original conclusion at the time when I was still new at this was maybe they're going to release two different versions. And I kind of got jumped the gun on timing, never predict timing exactly. I, usually uh, anything related to pricing or timing of things uh, that can release, when you try to predict things as a, uh, a definality, yeah, never do that if you do this kind of work because things can change. Uh, ideas might be different and maybe a new prototype wows the meta team and they're like, okay, well, we really got to work to this instead, especially when Apple's around the corner with the micro OLED display. So my belief is that uh, when they hear that Apple is definitely using micro OLED, they decided to kind of slow down the progress for C Cliff, which was very close to releasing and then work on C Bright more. And maybe there's a possibility. And I got another source that I was pretty sure was right about this because I trust them a lot. They reported that there was a Quest Plus or Quest Pro being worked on at the same time. So my belief was that, yeah, C Cliff, the mini LED at a lower resolution would be the Cambria uh, Quest Plus. And then the, the micro LED, which is the C Bright, would be a Quest Pro. So they would have the low tier at Quest 2, a mid tier at like C Cliff, and then a higher tier, more expensive at C Bright. That made sense to me because Meta literally changed their entire name of the company to work on XR devices. So it seemed like having a low, mid and high tier option would be reliable. And when I kept hearing that they're working so hard to make micro OLED displays for their next devices, it didn't make sense that they would save it for a Quest 3, which is still also being worked on in the background which the Quest is usually on the low end side of things. They usually like to take some of the bigger technologies and then kind of cut away some of the more expensive components to make a more consumer friendly product at a lower price point. Micro OLED displays are expensive, so it makes sense to me that they would actually try to focus on using the expensive stuff for the expensive headset. The issue was after Connect and we didn't get any uh, details on what display technologies or anything they were gonna use for Cambria, we basically also saw the Seabright uh, data mining. There was no new versions of Seabright at all. Seabright was like, again, like very exciting to me. I'm a very big fan of micro OLED technology, but there was no updates until today. We kept getting a lot of updates related to C-Cliff all the time. Just all these C-Cliff proving that they're, yeah, they're probably sending C-Cliff out to devs right now. It even pops up in the developer channel if you have a special developer account um, under where you would usually set up a Quest 2, for example, first time use. Yeah, C Clip is pretty much done. But C Bright, we finally got some new data mining stuff to actually show that, yeah, they've been working on C Bright as well. Originally, I thought after Connect that they might have abandoned the C Bright uh, prototype to only work on the C Clip. But clearly, we're getting some revisions to C Bright, so they are not abandoning the project, which kind of tells to me that, yeah, they're still very interested in this. Now, there's another thing I'm really curious about because I also got word, as I said earlier in this video, that Qualcomm and Facebook Meta uh, together are working really hard on a brand new chip. Now, 3K per eye is a lot to drive. And I, while the XR2 is powerful and they're gonna have two fans inside the headset for Cambria, that's already confirmed. I don't know how XR2 is gonna be able to load a very good content with a high resolution device like that. I know they're using DSC, which is display port uh, compression to sort of upscale and compress and sort of do all the data with that for this display, which really XR2 can drive displays at 3000K uh, or 3K per eye already, at least in terms of bandwidth, but the issue wasn't the bandwidth, it was the actual processing of applications. So when I see Valve and Apple, for example, seem to be very interested in using a smaller chip like an XR2 or Apple's working on their own chip more similar to like an A13, similar to their studio display chip and make that work together with a much larger chip that is more desktop grade, um, the Apple headset's likely gonna have an M2 chip and Valve is working on ideas to have a chip work with a sort of an AMD or a, a x86 SoC so you can run any Steam VR game standalone. These are the things that a lot of these big companies are working on. So I'm curious if even though that all the uh, actual data mining data we have for Cambria so far only refer to the XR2 chip, I'm curious if that's because they are also interested in having two chips in one device, which is why we have two fans in the device itself. Maybe this chip that they're working on with Qualcomm is much higher power rather than a, you know, it's still a mobile chip, but more like a laptop grade chip that we're seeing in the competitors working on. 
all these things put together is probably why we didn't get any announcements or any ideas of things of when this thing's going to release. It's probably much later in the year than I originally thought. And my supply, my supply chain sources really did think that the Cambria would release in quarter two of this year. And they were probably talking about C Cliff. C Cliff, again, is like EBT2 past that almost, sending out the devs. It is pretty much designed and done. It's probably just all the software tweaking done by the company is being happening right now, but I don't think C-Cliff is getting any iterations anytime soon. It's all mostly finalized parts. But C-Bright, for example, if they're still working on that and do plan to release it, those are all components that are mostly displays being figured out and mass production lines for that is being built as we're speaking. Especially when the chip shortage where TSMC is clearly working together with Meta and Apple to work with micro OLED wafers, it seems to still be a process. But I do think that micro OLED is really close on the, just right there for, for consumer technology. We're just so close to hitting that technology. When people see these high tier headsets, micro OLED, um, and all the problems related to what seems to be um, yields and all these other issues for costs, these companies have been working years, almost a decade, to get all these costs down at a mass productionable um, level. One, they, one way that seems to be Meta is doing that is um, where most micro OLEDs on the market today seem to have the actual uh, display driver IC built into the device. It seems that Meta is partnered with Novatech to actually have their own driver IC um, built for this micro OLED device so that they can have the IC uh, drivers built on one wafer, pick all the good ones off of that, and then get the actual uh, displays from that other wafer and get all the good displays on that, so you get better yields altogether rather than, well, maybe there's a chance that a driver I see built in a micro OLED device itself is bad, but the display is good. Well, you still have to throw away the entire display. These micro OLEDs are probably gonna be around two inches if I had to guess, or something around there. Maybe a little bit smaller, but they are much larger, but that has been the goal for these companies is to make larger micro OLEDs at cost cheaper, high quality, good yields, and we're very close to that meaning also brightness as well, because these are all using polarization-based optics, and we finally just hit the cusp of the brightness level for micro OLEDs as well. So everything is coming together perfectly, and I see Facebook Meta is still working on Seabright, despite that, the fact that C-Cliff is done, and that just makes me excited and believe that, yeah, we might see a Seabright on the market soon. I hope so. I don't want to use mini LED, honestly. I would pay a lot of money for the micro OLED version. Anyway, that is everything I have to say today. Uh, thank you to my $25 plus Patreon supporters that are listed here or something somewhere over here. These names, I don't know if there's a lot of them, but thank you, those people. You're awesome. Bye.